Hello, my name is Curtis Steele, and I am the application developer for the ProWall Commander Control System. In this video, we will go through troubleshooting and diagnostics. If you have any questions after viewing the video, please call ProWall Support at 403-335-9500. So there's a few different uh, features on the Commander display that allow you to uh, do troubleshooting and diagnostics of the mixer. We're going to go through the menu here and I'll go through some of the different things that you can use to uh, to see the various functions of the machine. So, so basically again, menu, diagnostics. This is going to bring you to a main diagnostics page that's going to show essentially on this page more of the hydraulic functionality of the mixer. So you're going to see things like your belt pressure, your auger pump pressure, oil temperature, charge pressure. The values at the top here are, are more for certain options that you can actually have like filter indicators although you will see things like oil temperature and charge pressure lights uh, come on so if there was a problem with the high oil temperature that would actually go red the charge pressure one would go red if the charge pressure got too low uh, but the main the main part of this screen here is just uh, for your essentially your hydraulic diagnostics and setup what you'll also see on this uh, screen is this uh, triangle here, which is your alarm log. So, so this is the alarm log, and what you'll notice is if you do have an alarm that comes up, it will actually show the, the date, the time uh, that the alarm came up. It'll show whether it was shown and then whether someone confirmed that it was actually there. So that's what the confirm part is. If you had more than one on here, you can actually hold up to 100 different alarms in total, but if you had more than one, so you couldn't see or whatever you can fit on here, probably about uh, 10 or something, you can actually touch this table when the box goes green. You can rotate the knob and scroll through them up to 100. When it gets to the 100th alarm, it actually rewrites the first and then keeps uh, writing over top of them as it goes. So. This is just an example of one here that you can see that we just kind of fake generated uh, just to show you that it, it shows it on the table. So this is a good troubleshooting tool to go and see if the operator is having certain issues um, you know, with, with some functions or whether maybe it's a, uh, an encoder fault or something like that, that they can actually go in and see what's going on. So that's, that's the alarm log, which is this button here. The other uh, spot you can go to is the uh, electrical diagnostics. So again, that was the bottom right-hand corner. It kind of looks like a multimeter. Just touch that symbol, and you go to electrical diagnostics. So what you'll see on this screen is a series of lights, essentially. So because this is just a simulator box, you're not going to see a bunch of these green lights on because technically all we have is a keypad the display encoder and the display connected. If this was actually on a mixer, you're going to have the joystick being green, belt encoder, cement encoder, uh, power module, all those different things would be green on an actual unit. So uh, what you will have, that uh, some of these lights will be red because they're options and they may not be physically on your mixer. So things like um, color, for example, color encoder. If you don't have a color feeder attached, that light will be red and it should be red because it's not physically there. Some of the other things that you can see on this screen are down here. In this case, we don't have a printer connected, so it's red. Uh, when the printer's connected, it will say active in green. You have uh, the current voltage going to the ECU, the current or total current going through the uh, ECU, uh, which kind of helps you see if you've got issues with uh, coils or things like that, specific functions, uh, the voltage at the display, and the display temperature. There's a couple other features here as well. So if you wanted to, for example, if this was actually connected to a coil, you can see here there's a box that you can select. So if you hit that where it says belt, you can actually scroll through those and select different functions on the mixer. So Again, if I was back on belt, if I was to run the belt, this would show me a value in milliamps of the current going to that coil. It's a, it's a good troubleshooting tool to see if uh, you've got a disconnect or no continuity to that particular function. Maybe a wire got cut or is broken or something like that. 
this gives you the ability to actually test it and see if you physically have current going there. And that, that functionality is good for for quite a few different items on the uh, on the mixer. So boom up, down, swing, left, auger mix, the different add mix functions. So any one of those functions you can select and it'll show you what current is uh, physically going to that coil. Uh, this here where it says power module status, the power module is the, is the main device that powers things like the vibrators and the admix pumps. So if there's a short circuit or again a, maybe a disconnect or a broken wire, this will actually come up with a, uh, a status of that particular output if it, if it isn't physically making a connection there. So again, it's just a more, another troubleshooting uh, spot that you can use to, um, to uh, check on you know, certain devices if, if they're not functioning properly. The other thing you can do if you, let's say you added a new device, for example, you added a new encoder to the machine, you can hit this CAN reset uh, and it resets all the CAN bus devices or, or the networking devices on the mixer to ensure they're, they're reset to their uh, default values. Uh, again, it's a kind of a troubleshooting tool or just a, a tool that you would use if you're adding a new component uh, to the mixer. Um, another actually really helpful tool when you're troubleshooting or even just uh, just when you're running the mixer, it's good to kind of use the screen off and on if, if, if you can, is the digital readout screen. And this just gives you a layout of everything that's going on with the mixer when it's running. So I'm going to actually going to put this into simulation mode here. And we're going to run a, a simulation just to uh, show you what you would see uh, on the screen while you're running. So we're going to run as if this mixer was pouring concrete. So you're going to see right away uh, belt speed, so your belt RPM, the number of counts that's coming off the belt, cement RPM. If you had any auxiliary functions running like color or fly ash, you'd see those values here. You're going to see your water flow rates, your admix, all the kind of pertinent or uh, running or process information for the mixer is showing up on this screen. So for troubleshooting purposes, what's important is these values on the bottom left-hand corner. So for example, if you look at belt speed, there's a value of 30 on the bottom left. What that value is, is the set point value or the target RPM that you've selected basically from the main menu or the main home screen. So in this case, we've, we want that belt to turn at 30 RPM. The value in the middle is the actual RPM that the belt is turning. So in the, in the real world situation, you're going to see this number kind of blip up and down a little bit. It might go 29, 30, 30, 29, 30, and so on. That's okay. As long as it's within one and it's, it's meeting that 30 RPM set point, that's what we want to see. What you'll notice though too is on the cement side, you also have the same things. You have a target value on the bottom left and an actual value in the middle. Again, you might see some uh, slight change where it might say 81, 80, 81, 80, and so on. That's normal. So what's important is that it's very close to 81 or within one off of 81 as it's kind of going up and down. So if you saw that this was reading 70 and this was reading 81, it's actually going to go into a fault anyways because it isn't meeting its set point target. But that tells you right away that... Um, there's, there's an issue somewhere, either something is jammed up, uh, but specifically it's not meeting its set point target, so further troubleshooting is required. These values here where you see it says 91%, that's just a calculated value to give you an idea of what the cement ratio is for this particular mix design. Uh, so that value should be very close to the value that is in your actual mix design for the cement ratio. Uh, well, so the same thing goes for the water as well uh, and the admix. Again, bottom left-hand number is your target and the actual is the center number. The uh, values on the top right, these percentages are the speed percentages or how fast you're turning that particular pump. So in this case or this example, the water pump is spinning at 25% of its maximum speed. You can also on the screen if you want to, you can change some of your units. Uh, so for example, if you're in if you're in um, 
US units, so in gallons per minute, and you wanted to see your, your values for flow in liters per minute, you can hit liters per minute and switch back and forth outside of the, uh, the main units that you would use in your mix, mix entry screen. Thanks for watching this video and please contact Prole Support if you have any further questions.